You know, there is a Sonic game that not many people are familiar with. You know the one I'm talking about, it's the one on the Wii U. Well, if you did forget, I wouldn't blame you. As I've previously stated, this game is very unpopular. Hopefully today I can do a great job at introducing this game to you, because this game has its ups and its downs. There's no easy way to make this review, because while the game sucks raggedy goat breasts, it's also not that bad of a game in many aspects. I'm actually really excited for this one, because believe it or not, I actually enjoyed Sonic Lost World, everything from the bombing soundtrack to the amazing parkour. <clears throat> Anyways, let's get into the worst part of the game. Ah, at last. Sonic Lost World story. It's bad. Like, really bad. Everything is a mess in every single way. So, you know, let's just start by summarizing the story because this is the only organized way I can explain my frustrations. Starting off, Sonic and Tails are out on a journey to save animals that Dr. Eggman has captured. Unfortunately, the plane is shot and is flown through the clouds until Sonic and Tails see a lost world of sorts off in the distance. Plane comes crashing down, this is when Sonic and Tails land on the Lost Hex. It looks awfully familiar to another place, I just can't put my finger on it. Anyway, Sonic is introduced to the buffoons called the Deadly Six by Eggman. This is when the problems really start to shine in the story. First of all, Sonic saving animals isn't the problem. That's actually a good way to start a plot. But then it just nose dives in quality when we see that the first area of Lost Hex is just Green Hill Zone. Now some of you may say that this is completely irrelevant to the story. Dialogue and plot wise, yes, that is very true. However, there is something that is very important for a story and it's called atmosphere. In storytelling, this is very important because it gets you invested in what the story is telling. Atmosphere is also what makes your story remembered by the audience. Some things that can influence the atmosphere is how the characters interact with each other, world building, tone, music, and other tiny quirks. The atmosphere greatly impacts how you feel about a game. In Sonic Adventure 2, you're running down Cityscape with a fantastic soundtrack and unique visuals. It's iconic, and you will always remember Sonic Adventure 2 for that. In Sonic Lost World, you're in Green Hill Zone again, except in the sky. So when you start remembering Sonic Lost World, it won't be as iconic as, say, Sonic Adventure 2, because you've seen the things in Sonic Lost World multiple times before. It's not distinct, and it's not iconic. It is just Sonic Green Hill Zone. The atmosphere is terrible in this game, but trust me, it's going to get much, much worse. But before we can move on to that, we also need to talk about the Deadly Six. The Deadly Six are a group of Zeddies that are controlled by Eggman using a shell thingy. Their main motivation is to destroy the world, except they cannot do that when Eggman is up their caboose every two minutes. Now, this is already a bad setup for villains because we don't even know who these Zeddies are. But I'll give it a pass, maybe the writing will be good. Except it isn't. The Deadly Six have a very comedic style of writing given to them. Which is fine, they don't even need to make the jokes funny. Just as long as the cutscenes are charming and enjoyable to watch, I'll be perfectly fine. Except, yet again, they mess this up too. The only slightly enjoyable thing about these cutscenes is the animation, Roger's portrayal of Sonic, and Mike Pollock's portrayal of Eggman. Sure, that may be a bit of a hot take, but I genuinely do think that Roger makes a great job at making Sonic a confident prick. I think that this should stay as a part of Sonic's personality. Now, there are other things about Sonic that I don't want to stay, but we'll get to that very soon. Okay, so Sonic makes it to the desert world, and this is when you find out that the atmosphere somehow got even worse. Instead of nostalgia pandering, it went to an alternative. You know exactly what I'm talking about, and it pains me to say this, but Sonic has definitely copied Mario. You don't understand how much this infuriates me. A desert world? A beach world? A lava world? This hurts my soul! The thing that set Sonic apart from Mario in the 90s wasn't because Sonic was a better platformer. It was because unlike every other platformer being made at the time, Sonic decided to be different. Sonic's gameplay wasn't about jumping on square platforms. It was about manipulating the momentum and gravity at high speeds. The gameplay was so vastly different from anything ever seen before, and to top it all off, 
Sonic has a clear-cut personality. He wasn't the family's safe friend, he was a cool guy that doesn't take no for an answer. The reason why Sonic and Mario both live this long without dying is because of how different they are. If Sonic was more like Mario, he would have been forgotten. So when I see this, I see a complete misunderstanding of what Sonic is as a franchise, and that is heartbreaking. Sonic needs to be in a cool city setting, or a cool and unique never seen landscape, not desert world! And trust me, it pains me to even bring up Sonic vs Mario in a video like this, but I kinda have to. This isn't Sonic Lost World! Ah, okay, there we go, much better. Anyways, Sonic finds Eggman and hits the shell that controls the Deadly Six out of his hands. Now, the Deadly Six have control over the Badniks and are no longer under control of Dr. Eggman. They can finally pursue their plan of destroying the world. But not long after, Sonic tells an Eggman team up to put a stop to the Deadly Six plans. The motivation behind Eggman teaming up is that he only wants to harness the planet's power, not destroy it. Now, this is such a great idea for a story. Sonic and Eggman teaming up to help each other's interests from the beginning is brilliant. We could go really in depth of the dynamic that these two characters share. We could find out what motivates Eggman to keep fighting Sonic. We could see why Sonic doesn't just kill Eggman. We could even explore the possibility that they both give each other purpose. But we don't really see that. Eggman and Sonic scenes are about as deep as a puddle. Which really sucks, that is a massive missed opportunity. However, I will say that it is fun to see Mike Pollock portray Eggman, especially in scenes with Roger's Sonic. These two have such a fun chemistry that just works so well. These comedic scenes are actually somewhat charming. It would have been nice if we had more heartfelt scenes, but I guess you can't really have everything. Moving on through the story, we encounter the scene where the Zeddy come to make fun of Eggman and Sonic. Eggman doesn't take this very kindly, I'm just going to roll the clip because it speaks for itself. I will burn your world, you rebellious scum! I will destroy everything you love and make you rot! No! 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 Boss, you're... This scene came from the same game as this scene. I've been looking for you, Baldy McNose hair! Who are your friends? The thing about this scene is that the serious tone was done very well. It still felt like a story that all ages could enjoy, but it wasn't edgy the hedgy. This scene was a glimpse of what I so badly want to see from Sonic storytelling. Seeing Mike Pollock get mad like that is really awesome. It made Eggman feel like more than just comedic relief. It made him feel like a fleshed out character. Which then leads into the best scene of the game. For all of the wrong reasons. Sonic comes across a capsule and goes to open it. But it was a trap and Tails ends up getting locked in it and taken away. The scene concludes with Sonic being sad because his best friend has just been taken away. Now there are too many things wrong with this scene. For one, the pacing is terrible. The scene starts and Tails is captured right away. Then Eggman and Sonic are able to process their thoughts and emotions within 5 seconds. This plus the capsule just not seeming like a threat at all. If this was a more dire situation that ultimately led to Sonic failing at protecting Tails, we would have felt the loss a lot more. There is also the issue of Sonic's reaction. It shouldn't have been a stupid quote like this. I'm supposed to be the fastest, but I was too slow to save my buddy. Sonic has just failed at protecting the person that he cares about most. And as far as I can tell, he is not used to failing in intense situations like this. Sonic's first reaction should have been a loss of words, stuttering, or maybe looking down at the ground in shame. We could have seen Sonic with the intense feeling of denial or shame, but they weren't capable of writing that. But you know what really ticks me off and what makes this scene even worse? The fact that Sonic 06, yes, Sonic 06, had a very similar scene to this and did it very well. In this scene, Sonic is carrying Elise and trying to escape from Eggman's ship. He jumps up to reach for the edge, but isn't able to reach it. Elise accepts her fate, but Sonic is left in a feeling of despair and denial. Sonic had just failed at protecting someone that he has great affection for, and his reaction wasn't something stupid that makes zero sense. This is one of the only times in the series that we get to see Sonic's confidence break, and it's for two seconds. 
I do like that it's rare for his confidence to break and because it makes it feel much more impactful when it does. But wow. They really missed out on a huge opportunity with this game. Oh yeah, by the way, Sonic and Tails have a conflict over Sonic not trusting Tails or something. I don't know, I don't care. It's so petty and so uninteresting that I just couldn't care less about it. Anyways, later on in the story, Sonic has to fight Robo Tails, which is again, another idea that has been butchered. You don't get to fight Tails in this scene because Tails reprogrammed himself to be good with his Tails. Yeah. I can't make this up. I can't tell you how cool it would have been to have a Sonic vs Tails boss fight, and how that would affect the story, but I'm not surprised at this point. They take every good idea and somehow make it insufferable in every way. Oh well, I guess we have to move on, there's too many issues. The next thing that happens is Sonic goes in and kills the Deadly Six, which I might not be joking. Whenever Sonic beats the Deadly Six throughout the game, they jump away so that they can come back later. But in their final levels, they just turn into dust. That couldn't have been an accident. Plus, in Team Sonic Racing, Zavik is known as the former leader of the Deadly Six. Did Sonic kill them? I don't care if this theory has flaws, I just like the idea of Sonic murdering these guys. Because they are terrible, and I only slightly enjoy Zavok because of his design. The rest of the Deadly Six can go eat rocks for all I care. They are all unfunny and one-note stereotypical characters. I hate them all. Okay, a little off topic. After Sonic murders the Deadly Six in cold blood, it turns out that Eggman was a meanie face all along and steals all of the energy for his mech. Which then something happens. Something... magical. I suddenly have an attraction towards men. So we just went through the entire game of nostalgia pandering and Mario shenanigans for them to finally bust out the good stuff. This final boss theme is so good and so Sonic-y that it's confusing to be in this game. Why didn't they drop moments like this throughout the entire game? Imagine if we could have had completely new worlds with a feeling of edge like that. This game is so confusing and so conflicting, it's starting to hurt my head. Anyways, at last, it ends with Sonic laying in the grass with the energy restored back to the world. Now, something you may have noticed is that I talked a lot about story in this video. That's because I love storytelling and I love to tell stories, so when I see something like Sonic the Hedgehog which has so much potential for great stories, I want to talk about it. It makes me sad when I see it mishandled because it could be so much better. But Lost World specifically, it's definitely not the worst Sonic story, but man, it feels like it. It had so many great ideas that just went completely to waste. Writing a story with the ideas that Lost World had should have been fun, not a stupid quota to get a story out for the new Sonic game. Make better stories, Sonic Team, or I'm gonna come over there and write the games for you, forcefully. With that being said, I think it's time to head into the gameplay. Unlike the story of Sonic Lost World, the gameplay actually delivers in a lot of areas. First, let's start off with what Sonic Lost World was all about. This time around, Sega decided to do what they do best with Sonic. Mess it up. After the big success that Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations had with the boost formula, it only made sense to break what has been fixed. So, Sonic Team gave up on the boost formula, because why not? It's not like the Wii U couldn't have handled a boosting game. The Wii had Sonic Colors for crying out loud. There was no excuse for this change. So the frustrations with this game are very much justified. And while I prefer the boosting gameplay over what we got in Sonic Lost World, I would be lying if I told you that I didn't have a blast playing this game. For not being boost or adventure, this gameplay does a bang up job. Dare I say it could be expanded upon. In this game, you play Sonic with a wide range of abilities. You must use these abilities to get to the end of the stage in the fastest amount of time. Except now, you aren't graded for it. You can get graded in the time attack mode, which doesn't grade you on score, it grades you on the time it takes to complete a level. But don't think that you do not need to kill extra enemies for score. 
because they made a way of halting progression. You now require a certain amount of animals saved to continue through the game, and yes, this means backtracking. Yeah, this part of the game is stupid, and it's the worst part. Backtracking sucks, I'm not going to lie to you. But it's not as frustrating as metals, so don't worry too much, it's actually pretty easy to save animals. Alright, moving on to Sonic's moveset. Unlike the adventure games, you don't gain speed over time, but instead you gain speed through a run button. Now this might be a bit of a hot take, but I think the run button was a necessary addition. You couldn't have Sonic gain speed through gravity and momentum because he could just do this! It also just makes the parkour a lot more simple and easy to understand. By the way, the parkour is awesome! It's very easy to use while also having a bit of a skill ceiling. The parkour just mixes very well with the level design, and even allows you to get creative with it. There are many parts within levels where a red ring may be hidden, and you usually need to be good at the parkour mechanics to get to them. I like this a lot because it makes the red rings a reward for mastering your movements. It's similar to another great game. Anyways, some extra moves in Sonic's moveset is the double jump, which can be used in a variety of ways. And then we have the biggest comeback of his moveset, the Spin Dash. The Spin Dash can be used to get through a level a lot faster if you're skilled enough to use it correctly. But once you learn the way of the Spin Dash, you don't go back. You just start using a Spin Dash no matter where you are. And yeah, I'm gonna give some love to the Spin Dash, it definitely deserves it. But the final new additions are the homing attacks. The first attack is the normal homing attack, which is used to kill enemies and target other objects like springs. Please note that you cannot homing attack wisp capsules because that would make too much sense. Seriously, what the heck? You can also chain a homing attack with multiple enemies to increase your score. This would be an awesome addition if it worked half of the time. There are a lot of times where I have to do a tap dance just to get to lock on, and dang it, I ain't got time for that! Next, we have the kick attack, which you will not know exists until you search it up online. You see, a big issue that Sonic Lost World suffers from is they do not tell you what to do. In my first playthrough, I got stuck twice. First time was right here with the spiders. I kept homing attacking them, but nothing was happening. I look up a tutorial and it turns out that you have to kick them, because there are two different homing attacks that look very similar. I was never taught this, and if I was, it must have been so unnoticeable, because man, that was some Stone Age stuff right there. I have rock. The next time I got stuck was during a boss fight with Zavok. You have to fight him twice before reaching the third phase. For the two times that you do fight him, it's a pretty simple procedure. You just dodge and hit until he runs into the next area. However, in the third phase, they change up everything with zero indication. The game expects you to know to bring Zavok to the edge and push him off. But if that was it, I wouldn't be complaining. There's still more. You don't kick attack him, no. You have to stand still for what feels like 8 seconds before homing attacking him off the edge. If you do not wait that long, you will fail or possibly die instead. I realized multiple things when I first experienced this. Number one, waiting is stupid. Number two, you can charge your homing attack? This is yet again another feature that you are never told about. A charge homing attack does more damage, so now when I play through the game after my first playthrough, I kill all of the bosses in two hits now. These bosses are fast when you know to charge your homing attack. Like, I mean, really fast. Just watch this clip. Now you wouldn't hurt a lady, would you? Every boss is like this except for the last one. Except that one's still very easy because it's a complete copy and paste of the Sonic Colors final boss. As you can see, this is the beginning of Sega's low budget development perks. But the final boss wasn't the only thing they reused. The aliens are here too. I actually don't mind them being present in the game, 
but when you make it a part of the gameplay like how Colors did, that's when we have an issue. We already had this gimmick, why has it returned? To make matters worse, the alien's abilities are much more worse than they were in Colors. And the level design doesn't support it the same way that Sonic Colors did, it just feels forced. The aliens didn't need to be part of the gameplay, so concluding that, the aliens suck in this game. No other way to put it. But hey, at least you can ignore them most of the time. That's part of why I love the level design. The level design has many branching paths and secrets that all require different levels of skill to adventure down. And again, the Red Rings really help complement the level design. But I haven't even mentioned the soundtrack yet. All I gotta say is that this is a Sonic game and the soundtrack delivers like always. Man, these tracks are great. Everything from the charming music of Frozen Factory all the way to the final boss fight music. I love it. In fact, this game is something that I would call addicting. Sure, it may experiment with dumb level gimmicks like a slide or a clunky snowball, but it's fun to play most of the time. After all of the criticisms I've given to this game, I still have a lot of love for it. Surprisingly, every time I return to this game, I enjoy it more and more. I just love the parkour and how I can keep becoming better at the game. That's what I appreciate most about Sonic games, the replayability. Sonic was built off of replayability, and if I want to keep replaying the game, I feel that you have done your job. It may not be one of the big boys, but it's something that holds my attention very well. So if you're dead set curious about this game, maybe you should just bite the bullet and take the chance. You might like it, you might not. At least your copy is guaranteed to work. I think the amount of hours I spent on this game speaks for itself. I love this game quite a bit. This game is horrible. Quit feeding your audience this nonsense. No, don't you dare snap your fingers at me. I don't really want you here, so you can either leave, or I'm gonna be snapping you out of existence. You're throwing objectivity out of the window again. This game is a dumpster fire. And you're right! This game is a dumpster fire. But I don't care, because I enjoy it. Now I'm sending you back to the Shadow Realm. Well, anyways, with that review wrapped up, it's time to look at a game that I quite frankly feel the opposite about. That game being Sonic Heroes. It's going to be a rough review. I'm gonna have a tough time reviewing that game, trust me. So, with that being said, that is the end of the video. I will see you guys with my new Sonic Heroes review very soon. Adios. My chill members are Min Meta, Saint, Sonic Cub, Thomas One Ride, Chip Chap Chop, Scape, Virtuous Azon, Sonic Pip, Daddy Cabbage Cake, Azure Sonic, Rubik Dash, Crash D00D, The Squeaker Nerd, Super Shax Boom, Sonic Extreme, Super Saiyan Sonic, and Sonic Fan. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. You guys went out of your way to help me, <laughs> and I can never repay that. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy Cabbage Cake. That is an amazing name. I've never heard something like that. Anyways, make sure to join Discord server, guys. It's a great server. We talk about Sonic and beat each other up. Love you guys. Adios.